So when you go to do any of the proofs, and this is the same process for both coordinate geometry and the two column proof, you should be thinking about all the properties of that quadrilateral that you're trying to prove. So at the top of the page, I put it there for you. This is what you should be going through. Which way do I want to use to show it's a parallelogram? Do I want to show that both pair of opposite sides are parallel? Do you want to show that both pair of opposite sides are congruent? One pair of opposite sides is both congruent and parallel. Both pair of opposite angles are congruent or the diagonals bisect each other. With coordinate geometry, I, if it doesn't specify the method, I always use the midpoint formula to show the diagonals bisect each other. So you could do that here or we could use a different method. So in using the givens, it says DB bisects AC. So number two, let's use the givens to help us do the proof. That means if DB bisects AC that AE is congruent to CE. You could say that E is a midpoint and then say that step, but you don't need to. And that's because a segment bisector, just like an angle bisector, divides a segment into two congruent segments. So I use that given. Now I am going to use the next given and since angle one is congruent to angle two, here's the transversal, that means AD is parallel to CB. Because if two lines cut by a transversal form congruent alternate interior angles, then they're parallel. So number two, or three, is AD is parallel to CB or BC. So I abbreviated, again this is our note page, you can abbreviate on your homework but you don't want to abbreviate on an assessment. Okay, so that's using the two givens, and I'll tell you, when you're doing these proofs, you should look to see if you could get any congruent triangles so that you can use parts of those congruent triangles with CPCTC to get a pair of angles congruent, a pair of sides congruent, um, so that you can use one of the properties. Since I have one side, one pair of opposite sides parallel, I'm going to now show that those, pair, those sides are also congruent, and then I'm done. If one pair of opposite sides are both congruent and parallel, then it's a parallelogram. And to do that, I'm going to use the vertical angles here. So 3 is congruent to 4 because all vertical angles are congruent. And that means the triangles are congruent. So I'm going to write the statement. I want you to write the shortcut or the postulate. Is it SSS, SAS, ASA? What postulate is it to show the two triangles congruent? So number five would be, let's say, triangle AED. That would be congruent to triangle CEB. And by what shortcut? And then I'm going to say AD is congruent to BC, as we just talked about, by CP. CTC. By which shortcut are those two triangles congruent? ASA, angle side, angle good. So now number seven, we're done. And again, that's because I have one pair of opposite sides parallel. And now I have those opposite sides congruent. And above, the property states that if you have one pair of opposite sides both parallel and congruent, it's a parallelogram. So number seven 
would be that A, B, C, D is a, and you can use the symbol, parallelogram, if, I'm just going to, if you want to look at the top of your page, I'm just going to copy that down, if one pair of opposite sides are both congruent in parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So in example number two, we're going to use the properties of a rectangle to show that AE, uh, segment A is congruent to segment BF. Now you're not necessarily given, as in the first and the last proof, what specifically your givens are. You're given this paragraph. So what are you going to pull from those two statements above and write as your givens? So as you're reading it, would you possibly or could you pop, uh, possibly use the properties of a rectangle to prove that? Yes. Yeah, so you're going to want to write that you have rectangle A, B, C, D. Points E and F on sides A, B. Those give us different segments that make up that side, but that's not something we would essentially use in our proof. We have segments C, E, and D, F intersect at G. And then the last thing I would write that we are going to use is angle A, D, G is congruent to angle B, C, G. So this angle here, if you highlight the two rays that form those angles, that might highlight some triangles within that picture. We want to show that AE is congruent to BF. To show two sides of a triangle, two angles of a triangle are congruent, that's using CPCTC. Now those aren't using two sides or two angles of triangles. They're parts of sides of triangles. So that's either using addition or subtraction to kind of give you some hints. So in this question here, if you follow along, again, using those two rays that form the angle, you have triangle, I'll use a different color, you have A, D, F right here. See that in blue? And then using a different color again, you have E, C, B. You can see the blue and the pink overlap here in the middle. So if I use those two triangles and I can prove them congruent, I can take that overlapping segment and do what operation to get AE or FB? Subtraction. So how can we prove those two triangles congruent? Right now we have this angle congruent to this angle. Can we get some other sides? Amanda, some angles. I want to say that. I want to use the fact that it's a rectangle. Let's put a 1 and a 2 here. 1 and 2 are right angles. And then number 3, they are congruent because all right angles are congruent. So angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles. And then angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And as she said, a rectangle has four right angles, and then number three, all right angles are congruent. So we have two angles congruent. Remember, we can't use AAA to show congruency, that's similarity, so I need a side somewhere. Sydney? Yep. AD is congruent to BC because opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent. So number four, AD is congruent to BC. Now the triangles are congruent and we're going to use CPCTC. So note the sides we're going to use CPCTC on and write your congruency statement. So number five 
I'm going to say triangle DAF. So DAF would be CBE. What's our shortcut for congruency this time between the two triangles? We've got an angle, we've got our side angle, so ASA again. Where do we want to use the CPCTC on what two corresponding parts? Remember, CPCTC stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Amanda? Yes, AF congruent to BE as they're overlapping right here. So AF congruent to BE. Number seven, reflexive on EF. And by eight, we can go right to subtraction. You don't have to show what segment minus what segment. So by subtraction, AE is congruent to BF. Now the last one showing that parallelogram is Aramis is the shortest. It's only four steps. So I want you to read it, come up with a plan. <coughs> 